How's it going everybody? Adricker here. And in the past, I've uploaded various creative artsy videos that I've made and I try and color grade them or I might shoot them in 24 frames a second to get that cinematic quality to them. And one of the things that I've done is I've also sometimes applied that cinematic aspect ratio, that ultra wide, maybe 2.39 over one aspect ratio of the footage, which means that there's a black space at the top and the bottom of the footage. It's, it's much, much wider than it is tall, even more so than what normal HD 16 by nine would be. Not everyone wants to shoot in that ultra wide format, but you know, it's fun to mess with. And you see that a lot in movies or maybe music videos. Now, how do you get that look? Well, if you don't have special lenses or lens filters, you gotta crop the top and the bottom of your footage out. You're basically deleting part of the frame and you're keeping that center strip. So you could do that, it's no problem, but you are losing some of your frame. Unless you have an anamorphic lens or an anamorphic lens filter. Now in the case of the DJI Osmo Pocket or the DJI Mavic Air 2, Freewell Gear has made some anamorphic lens filters for us and we're able to get somewhat that wide aspect ratio that we're looking for. Not extremely wide, not like a 2.39 over one, which is an extreme example. I've used that in the past with my cropping method. This is more like a 2.04 over one. And that's just an aspect ratio of how wide the footage is versus how tall it is. And best thing about it is you don't have to crop your footage. It really is that shape after you de-squeeze it. Now, I was using a Google Pixel 4a as my display device for both of these devices as I was shooting. You'll notice that the footage looks narrower. Everything looks a little skinny and really tall. The whole point here is it's shooting wider than normal, so you're getting a little bit of extra real estate with, with how much it's capturing in the footage, but the footage is still the same shape as it always was. You don't have any black strip at the top or the bottom like you're looking for. What you gotta do is put that footage into Adobe Premiere like I have here and then de-squeeze the footage. I'm gonna show you how to do that in Premiere, but you can also do it in Final Cut or whatever other video editing software that you use. So there is a little bit of post-production involvement that you gotta do to get it look just right, but the shooting element is pretty much normal. You see everything in your frame and you just go and shoot. Now, in addition to getting this more cinematic, wide aspect ratio, we also get these cool lens flares. You might have seen maybe J.J. Abrams' Star Trek 2009. Yeah, he might have overused them a little bit. But basically, if you have a very, very bright light source shining into the lens, you're gonna get that, that uh, lens flare. And it's like, it's this nice blue horizontal flare. It looks kind of futuristic and you can get it shooting at the sun, or maybe you're downtown at night, you're shooting the street lights, and that's just another benefit of anamorphic lenses in addition to your wide aspect ratio. Now, if you've already used filters with these devices before, you know how they fit on. The Mavic Air 2 has these little notches that the filter has to kind of insert into and then turn to tighten on. The DJI Osmo Pocket is magnetic, so as you put the filter on, it just kind of latches on there. And the DJI Osmo Pocket filter is probably the one that would be more likely to fall off. Luckily, the Air 2 is very well secured on the lens. It's not gonna fall off while you're flying up in the sky 400 feet above the ground. Now, the filters are really, really cool, but they are filters, which means that you are gonna get normal lens flare behind that characteristic anamorphic blue horizontal lens flare. So it could be lens flare overkill, depending on what kind of shot or just how much light source is entering the frame. Also, I have noticed there's a little bit of a softness on the side of some of these filters, and I'm not sure if that's maybe because the filter wasn't on properly while I was shooting, or maybe I didn't have uh, the focus set properly with the DJI Osmo Pocket. Maybe I didn't tap to click on the right thing in the frame. On the left side of this image, I do see it's a little bit softer than the right side. It could be an autofocus issue, or maybe the lens filter is a little bit soft. So here we have Adobe Premiere pulled up, and what I'm gonna do is import some footage into this project file. And I know I'm gonna be using um, some Mavic Air footage for this particular demonstration. I think this clip is a good one. So when I import it in and I double click this, get it to my source window and I scoot to about the middle, you can see um, I'm not that skinny. I wish I was, but I'm not that skinny. Everything is a little bit squeezed in, even though this is normal 16 by nine aspect ratio, like normal video. 
uh, obviously we need to do something about this and stretch it out a little bit wider. What we can do is drag this clip into our timeline area, creates a new sequence right here, and uh, does that automatically when you drag it into your timeline area. But what we have to do is resize our timeline. And we can right click on our timeline here on the left on, in our project uh, window, and we go to sequence settings. And here we can select our frame size. Now we're gonna keep 3840, but we're gonna adjust 2160, which is our vertical amount of pixels. And the, the, the number we're gonna put in there is 1878. And that is going to be the proper ratio uh, for pixels wide versus tall. And if we hit OK, and we're gonna hit OK on this, it's gonna say something about um, changes to uh, preview file format. Um, you notice on the left and on the right, the right side is our new project our new sequence size and you can see it's a little bit uh, shorter same width but it's just shorter than the, the the video on the left so this is the original and this is our new uh, project file sequence size our new aspect ratio now what we can do is double click on our clip down here in our timeline and go to effects we under motion we see scale we're going to expand scale and we're going to uncheck uniform scale now we're going to adjust our height. And basically we're going to scale down our height like this until we see those black bars. Now we don't want to see them, not yet. What we're going to do is find the value, which looks like it's about 87, which is uh, where our footage just touches the top of our new framing. 87, so 100 width is the same, 87 scaled height is, is what we adjusted. Now what we can do is go back into our project pane here, right click, hit sequence settings again, and put it back to 2160, which is what we had at the beginning. So this is 3140 by 2160, which is back to our 16 by nine aspect ratio. We're gonna hit okay for those previews, and boom, we have our properly scaled, our properly stretched footage. We have those black bars on the top, and uh, that's what's gonna give us our new cinematic wider aspect ratio. Um, now I did shoot in uh, a D Cinelite color profile with the Mavic Air. So what I could do is go ahead and add uh, with Lumetri controls, uh, maybe like 40 to contrast and maybe like 115 to saturation. I could also add a LUT if I had one. Uh, but anyway, that is really how I look. A few extra pounds, you know, hey, it's whatever. And then if I had other clips, I'm gonna do this real fast where I just import maybe two or three more clips in here, and I drag them into the uh, project timeline, what I can do is click on that original clip that I have modified with the motion and then scaled the height and everything, and uh, click on motion, and then control C or command C, whatever platform you're using. Either way, copy this value, and maybe I'll right click to show you. Copy that value, so right click, copy, and then highlight everything else in the timeline, everything else that's been using the anamorphic lens filter, and just uh, hit uh, Control V or you know Command V or whatever it is, and that will apply that new aspect ratio to every other clip uh, in the timeline that you have selected here. You can also copy your Lumetri control. So I've already applied my con uh, contrast and my saturation. I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy that highlight everything else and paste it on there. And then I have my saturation and my contrast uh, on all these other clips. A few of them were over, a little bit bright. Um, I was getting used to uh, using over uh, overexposure uh, warnings with the Mavic Air, which is a little bit different than the Mavic 2 Pro. But um, either way, we can see we have those nice horizontal lens flares peeking through the trees and everything looks right. That's awesome. By the way, it's also important to note that both the Mavic Air 2 and the Osmo Pocket boot up just fine and have their initial gimbal calibration you know, process upon startup with uh, the lens filter on. Now, if you do wanna get that 2.39 over one more extreme wide angle aspect ratio, you can still crop in a little bit more. The good thing about that though is you have that wide aspect ratio to work with to begin with. So you're not really cropping out quite as much and you're still getting those hefty letter boxes that you might be looking for. For most of these videos and even for me talking to camera right now, I'm, I'm shooting in 24 frames per second. Uh, I used to shoot a lot in 24, more recently 30, just cause it's easier it seems. 
um, and it flows a little better for more vlog type material. But I do still consider 24 to be that most creative, that eye-catching look that I generally go for if I'm trying to be creative and artistic. I know a lot of people who prefer 30, a lot of people who prefer 60. I have a whole video about 24 versus 30 versus 60, and the comments, if you go through them, it's very obvious that it's, uh, that it's in the eye of the beholder. There's no right or wrong answer, whether you shoot 24, 30, or 60. A lot of people prefer higher frame rates. I don't for certain types of projects, and you can't argue with anybody about what's, what's right and what's wrong. It really is just personal taste. Another benefit, however, was shooting in 24 and then having a 1 50th second shutter speed means that I was able to get the brightest exposure when I was downtown at night. I had 3200 ISO on the Osmo Pocket. Still kind of struggles. It's pretty soft at 3200, but um, you know, with the, the slowest shutter speed I could muster and 24 frames per second, I think I was able to get a pretty well decent exposure out there and I was able to show off those anamorphic lens flares. So it's a pretty simple product. I know there are also anamorphic filters for maybe other types of drones, but Freewell right now is focusing on the Mavic Air 2 as well as the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket. And I use those quite a bit. I, I bring out the Osmo Pocket when I'm shooting a wedding. I always have it in my back pocket just in case I need to whip it out and film something really quick. Uh, and then the Air 2, we just got support for the smart controller, DJI smart controller. So that's an even more of a reason that I would bring this out. And that's about it. In the comments below, tell me, have you ever shot in anamorphic aspect ratio or with anamorphic lenses or lens filters? And if you have and it's on YouTube, link your video. I'll make sure to accept it if it gets caught in YouTube's review system. Thanks so much to Freewell Gear for sending me the anamorphic lens filters for the DJI Osmo Pocket, as well as the DJI Mavic Air 2. And until next time, happy flying and recording.